Today it's time for a professional match of Zerg versus Protoss. And what I got for you today is a game on the current smallest map in the map pool. We've got a game on Cyber Forest, spawning here in the top left hand corner of the map and playing with the red Protoss probes. He's from South Korea and he goes by the name of Patience. And his opponent in the opposite corner playing with the blue Zerg drones. Also from South Korea, we have none other than Sue. Now, just in case my voice sounds a little bit differently, I don't think it really does, but just in case it does, um, I had my wisdom teeth pulled a couple days ago. According to the surgeon, I am allowed to go back to work today. I mean, it's been about uh, it's been about four days or so, so supposedly I'm allowed to go back to work and I feel fine. But just in case, it's still pretty badly swollen, just in case my voice sounds a little bit differently, that would be the reason. Now... I was going to talk a little bit more about that, but you know what? There's a forge already coming up right here for patience, which is not your standard opener in Zerg versus Protoss. There's a probe moving across the map. Do we have a professional cannon rush? I haven't seen that in, in quite some time. I think that's exactly what we have. Sue is not going to be able to see that pylon. There we go. He does still have that overlord hanging around in his natural... This is actually one of those builds that is very, very popular the lower on you go onto the ladder. But then, the higher you go, right, the better people get at microing their units, and generally speaking, they should be able to stop it, although... Yeah, Sue, he's recognized the scenario, he decided to only pull a single drone. He knows of this build order, apparently, and he realizes that it's gonna be pretty much impossible to stop these photon cannons from going up, as this is basically a full wall right over there. Another photon cannon will be coming up this time around inside of the main base. I think this one is just barely going to be in range of the... Uh, is it going to be in range of the hatchery? I guess we'll find out. Yeah, it will be. Okay. Um, so I guess that's that, right? I think that's the end of this hatchery at the very least. There's a couple of spine crawlers right now coming up here for suit. This will be scouted immediately by patients. There's a couple different ways you could deal with it uh, if you're a Zerg player, right? You could go ahead and transition towards quick Ravagers. In that case, you need the second gas. I think that's what this second photon cannon right now in the main base is dealing with. Um, you can't really go ahead and take the gas right now. But um, just this scenario already, it puts Sue in a bit of a weird position. He's likely going to be able to use these spine crawlers to shoo away the photon cannons, but with more photons finishing up, and a Nexus right now going down on the side of Sue, he should be okay. A couple of Zerklings trying to make their way across the map. This photon cannon, though, should be enough, and in the end, two Zerklings aren't going to be that big of a deal anyway, but here we go. Spine crawlers are trying to move forward. We see the Zerklings now also engaging. Queen taking a lot of damage. I think it might just barely be able to survive. And with that, while maybe... This is going to be enough right here for Sue to hold. He already lost his main base, or his natural right now. He's only got his main base left over. And after all of that settles down, right? And while there's still a couple Zerklings on the other side, we have a second base here for Patience. So, while this is a very uncommon build right now at the top level of play, I guess if you are on the smallest map in the map pool, right? And you have a location where you can go ahead and put up photon cannons and block them off with pylons initially. Either Zerk is gonna have to pull drones, but if you can, you know, force the full ball off, that's not gonna really achieve that much. I think that means that right now, Patience finds himself in a really, really good spot. He's effectively soft contained to his opponent right now on one base. Eventually, Zerk should be able to break out of this, but look at the amount of income already. Right, look at the amount of resources right now that are being gathered right here uh, for both of these players. It's heavily in favor here of our red Protoss player. Now, I like this. Sue following this up, trying to get that really good tech advantage. He's following it up with a quick lair. The thing about the lair, obviously, right now is that you can go ahead and build, for example, a spire. You could go up to uh, an infestation pit. But lately, we've been seeing a lot of Nidus Worm play. And Nidus Worm play is extremely potent after cannon rushes especially. Because there's been a lot of resources that went into this, right? So once this photon cannon right here dies, you'll notice, okay, there's a lot of resources that went into that. And technically speaking, this should be a minor advantage here for Sue. It's just that Patience has more economy right now as it is, and that means that the longer that this game goes on, the more income he's going to be able to generate as well. It is going to be that Nidus network. Oh my god, beautiful scout there by Patience. 
knows exactly when he needs to get in there. He knows about the Nidus network right now, and that means the only thing he really needs to do is make sure he scouts wherever that Nidus worm is gonna go up. And right here, star senses are tingling. He recognizes this is the most common location where Zerg players like to put that, uh, that structure down. And even though he hasn't seen the Overlord, it doesn't really matter too much. Patience seems to be one step ahead of the schedule. Now already, uh, we do see Sue building up a spire here as well, which I like a lot. He knows that his structure got scouted there. Patience already pulling a whole bunch of probes as well as that stalker. Is that the correct amount of probes that you need? So it's two, four, six, it's like eight probes. Eight probes and a stalker. I guess nine probes here with that one added as well. I guess that's going to be enough right here to kill any kind of Nidus Worm from coming up. Now with the second Stalker joining though, I've got the feeling that these probes can easily go back to mining if they want to. But um, this is already a really beautiful defense right here for Patience. But I guess it is costing him quite a lot of resources as well. I mean, technically he has an economical advantage, but he's not really getting too much done. I also love the fact that Sue decides to not really commit to any kind of aggression here in the first place. I mean, he knew that his Nidus network got scouted, so if that's the case, why would you even attempt it if you know that your opponent is really good? Look at that. Even though the Nidus network didn't really get that much done, he ended up cancelling it right there as well. He already forced out a ton of photon cannons. He forced a lot of mining time lost right there as well. I kind of love it. Patience, though, with the star senses. Did he scout it? Dude, these players are so good, seriously. Um... So, he knows that his opponent went for a Nidus network, never saw a Nidus worm going up, and he's like, you know what, what would be the most likely second follow-up off of just one or two bases? And I think it would indeed be Spire, so he's going for a double Stargate right now, after Chrono boosting out one of those Immortals to get rid of any kind of Nidus worm play in the first place. If this would be just a Roach Ravager follow-up, I think it would be a pretty difficult one to hold, but it just doesn't make a lot of sense after getting that Nidus Worm play, right? So, I think that indeed, Patience is correctly assuming right now that it is going to be that Spire play, and even though he hasn't scouted it, he's got the star senses to uh, to add one and one together, right? It's a really difficult, uh, you know, math problem right there. He needed to find X, and even though he didn't know where X was, he's done a great job um, eliminating the different possibilities that Zerk could be going for right now. Well, here we go. Patience. Ooh, moved across the map right now with an Observer. Queen, though, in position right here. Anticipating the movement as well of that Observer. Man, these players are so freaking good. Anyways, six, seven Mutas right now are coming up. Double, um, yeah, Phoenixes right now are also being produced, though. And in the grand scheme of things, right, since Phoenixes can move and shoot at the same time, it allows them to kill Mutas with ease. They also deal bonus damage to Light, which is what Phoenix is, uh, or that is what Mutalisk are. So I feel like even though Sue doesn't know about this double Stargate, and even though Patient doesn't know about the, uh, my God, he, he runs with the Diva announcer pack, I guess so. Even though he doesn't know about the Spire, he might find out. No, he doesn't. Um, it, it still, it still means though that they're both in a really good spot. I love the fact as well that Patient is waiting here. He's got a lot of patience. I mean, pun, pun not really intended, but he's got a lot of patience with moving across the map. Right now he's going up to six though. Kind of feel like you do want to make a move for it here eventually, but he knows the Mutas are out, and he knows all he needs to do is wait for them to come to him before he springs the trap. Well, there we go. Mutas have arrived on the other side of the map. Sue did end up seeing the Phoenixes as well. Phoenixes are very fast units. They should be able to chase this down eventually, but as long as the Mutas get home, the Queens can force some of these Phoenixes off of the line as well. I love the fact that they started off with a cannon rush though, right? It's so crazy. Both players having a lot of skill right here, trying their very best. Ooh, good target firing there actually as well by Sue with that queen. Picking up one of those phoenixes, but two mutas already go down. And map control right now is heavily in favor right here of our Protoss player in red. He's using that time right now to create a third nexus as well. Only just now do we actually see some proper saturation here for Sue who's been slowly adding on a couple drones here and there as well. Now, adding on Corruptors to try and force these Phoenixes to stay away from the Mutas. But I've kind of got the feeling, right, that Patience has been countering Zerk at every single angle. Right now, he's not actually committing to any kind of additional Phoenix play anymore. Apparently, he's happy with the amount that he's got. He's going to transition right now towards that ground-based army. We see a Glaive the Depth upgrade coming up. We see a lot of gateways coming up as well. We see the plus one uh, weapons for the ground units as well coming up here for patients. I like this position for him a lot. And even though Sue, he's holding on right now against these Phoenixes using the Corruptors, he's not going to be prepared against the big 
I, I, yeah, I think there's going to be a big push, right? Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, as long as these upgrades finish, he's going to be in a, a phenomenal spot. I don't think that Sue is really going to be ready for a push like that. Now, obviously, he does still have that Roach Warrant from earlier. So, going for a Roach Ravager here is probably the best play. But then already, we see a lot of those Immortals coming up. We see the War Prism now ready to go as well. Ooh, Patience, though, is going to move before these upgrades finish. Even going up to plus one, um, a miss or a plus one air weapon upgrades right there as well. The Phoenixes are still going to be pretty useful. They can go ahead and pick up some of these high-value targets. If indeed there are Ravagers morphed in. Or I guess they can also go ahead and just go after more and more of these Mutalisks. But here we go. Patience, though, not gonna wait until he finishes up his Glaive to Depth upgrade. He doesn't even have that many Adepts here in the party in the first place, so it doesn't really matter. Already forcing Zerk to move up that ramp. He does have a lot of sentries here as well, so he can go ahead and indeed force fueled on that ramp, eliminating those Zerk reinforcements to get over here. Now, of course, the Corruptors are really useful. There we go. They ended up getting a kill right there on that War Prism as well. A lot of the Phoenixes are now gone, though, and that means that lots of um, anti-ground right now is available here for Sue. But the thing is, this, yeah, these Mutas are still going to be picked off quite easily there by the Stalkers. Another War Prism does come up. There's so many Protoss units available, and on the back of this, right, Patience does still have three Nexi mining as well. He has to be very careful with the positioning of that War Prism right there. The Corruptors do decide to commit. The Prism does get picked off, but not before. Finishing up a big round of war pins and patience is the one who actually got like four steps ahead Okay, I'm just playing checkers when I play Starcraft, but these guys they're playing 3d chess Anticipating the move outs. I love that containing Zerk on one base putting up a photon cannon So they are forced to go for the spine crawler approach to get rid of those photon cannons then scouting the Nidus worm anticipating that move and then forcing a couple of uh, those uh, probes off of the mineral line that also without scouting the spire preparing for an imminent muta switch because it makes the most sense and Patience right there, two steps ahead of his opponent in every single way. He is the one who very nicely obtains the victory. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notifications as soon as I upload more. A special shout out to the Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much for all your generosity. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile all right, and I will see you once again in the next one.